Welcome on board to the talent onboard presentations. In this video, we'll talk about the talent onboard onboarding methodology that has been in vogue for the last few years. Last few years, it is onboarding which has been done primarily on a virtual mode altogether. Yes, the physical mode has become active, but why not keep with ourselves the abreast with the situation as towards talent onboarding has uh, been done. We are not only doing talent onboarding physically, but we are ensuring that they, all the steps have been mapped and marked in an online portal. The online portal of the company that goes around it, it helps us as a checkbox to tick all the checkboxes that every step has been followed. Remember the trend is on to have everything in the cloud as the case might be. Now, this is a cloud that comes around here and we need to keep everything absolutely Kept. It's an in integrated cloud-based core capital management solution is what we are looking for. It allows information collected in one area to populate information in another area, creating a unified location of an employee data through employee life cycle, beat recruitment, onboarding, learning, time to leave, performances, careers, compensation, and offboarding. Now, this is what the human capital management is all, all about it. This is where we are talking about the cloud as a case might be, where we can store everything. Now, this is where we need to understand integration and automation. First and foremost thing, we create a position. Definitely, yes, we have a position for an existing vacancy. This needs to be, uh, the manager needs, needs to select the post and review. Position needs to be posted. Budget has to be approved for the salary, for the compensation, for the cost to the company that needs to be worked around it. Automated workflow. Candidates should be reviewed. Supervisors, committees access information easily in the system. Offer letters to be generated, auto generated by perhaps many a times. Why? Because the standard positions, standard uh, rates, everything is already automated so acceptance triggers automation of onboarding now this is what we need to understand the moment it has been accepted the automated onboarding system and has been populated the hr payroll system has been generated new employee receives the welcome message complete pre-start dates activities new employees have the system access on the day one absolutely with their user id with their passcode details, everything has been posted to them. Employees completes weeks, one activities, enrolls in the benefit, whichever, whenever, whatever is applicable. Employees and supervisors have a baseline goal for the first 90 days, for the first three months, everything is mapped all together. Remember when for the first 90 days, it's the onboarding process module that goes around it. So what happens in the online portal? Uh, the employees will have access to everything and this is just for an example that I've given given to you if they may and this can come to any of the uh, any of the organization that we're talking about it be it a academic organization be it a fast moving consumer good organization be it a steel industry be it a mining industry be it a fashion industry wherever you join you need to understand the employee will have an access to the pay statement update tax forms update personal information including education update bank information request time offs or leaves then and there Organization structures and position management, online portal structures. The traditional organization's chart view has to be seen, visible, understood. It makes gives clarity to the new joining altogether. The position organization chart display position details, kicks off position or the recruitment process thereby. Position in corporate jobs, family, career, any details that we are looking into it with the perspective of employment. Nothing beyond it is what we are looking forward to. We're talking about the position creation demonstration. What we are looking into it. Uh, let me go around. Let's say a compensation manager talks about creating and approving a position. That needs to be kept in mind. A position must be created to start with the recruitment process. An initiator role provides the availability to create or edit. Position within the portal in a sneak peek the administrative assistant has the initiator's roles to create the position the human uh, resources 
can review the position then and there and that is all what we are looking into it nothing beyond it is the understanding the position information demonstrated in a previous slide will populate it automatically automatically in the recruitment summary you know what will happen in the requisition field the initiator also needs to complete the information to post and hire the position three distinct hiring process let's say the employees the staff and the vendors that we goes around it four position of four advantages is it reduces it reduces a lot of time altogether a lot of effort thereby it can be done through a mobile devices if there is a transparency in the progress integration of an onboarding payroll and so on and so forth all the process includes an automated workflow uh, e approval will be mandated every time from a senior position e offers can be made around it so that everything become transparent every employee every organization every supervisor every manager whoever has to have the link should be able to know what has been discussed and whatever has been been offered in black and white it's been written format that has been given access to the reports and the data is thereby <laughs> we are talking about recruitment and how do we talk about the recruitment then and there you need to understand the you what about the position that you got to do first and foremost the first step is to create a requirement so in initiators creates a requisition for a vacant position in an organization chart immediate supervisor will intimate, intimate that there is a requirement in the downline the complete information has to be filled in the initiator the supervisor the manager whoever is creating a vacancy as to what why an employee or why uh, there is a vacancies what has been requisitioned what other job entails upon it what are the job requirements what are the job uh, specification job description everything needs to be mentioned out here come to the step number 3 is all about getting the things approved the approval of budget what will be the cost to company for the new appointees per perhaps the budgeter reviews uh, the requisition approves fiscal details what happens with the oie officers in charge in approval uh, views the requisition and supplementary information gets approved edit posting departmental rec recruiter review the position with the information edit the posting information then and there and last but not the least would be positioning the post about the recruitment on the different career sites perhaps in the organizational chart organization website we're talking about the select finalist now this is where the initiators or the search committee selects the finalist the offer has to be made by the departmental in terms of the requisite template that been given the salary what once negotiated needs to be approved reviewed and probably uh, given a green light the approval from the managers the dean probably the director probably the the supervisor probably whatever approval is required the provost approvals uh, the management approval extend the e offers and acceptance of the e offers from the employees end this is where we close the search initiators enters the rankings all together so process flow is what we are looking forward time and again is what we need to go around it yes we are talking about the initiators the budget approvals i have already said it in the chart what needs to be done who are looking into it as who creates the position what are the budget that needs to be approved upon it the departmental recruitment everybody has their own job cut all together so that the right person with the right fitment to the organization is been appointed for the search committee does the requisite methods or strategies for selecting or going for the recruitment process the budget has to be approved and so the staff recruitment what happens with the staff rec recruitment it is a little bit a shorter version of an employee rec recruitment altogether here we are keeping things very short and simple because why we are not looking into a technical abilities or we are not looking these are not the line people that you have been recruitment these are the staff recruitment so we just simply create a requisitions we require 
put in the complete details that is required for the uh, incumbent to fill up the particular position, get the budgets to be approved, edit the posting, and probably post that positions to the relevant sites, website of the organization, perhaps other organization, other website in terms of indeed.com, in terms of monster.com, in, in terms of Glassdoor, and so on and so forth. Extending the offer, once the finalist has been selected by the search committee, we make an approval. The offer has to be getting approved upon it before making an approval. The salary has been approved for and thereby we extend the offer. Once the offer has been extended and thereby accepted, we close the search. In any of the steps, if things are getting bottlenecked, we need to review those steps time and again. So yes, after selecting the final listing, we make an offer approval. Approval after getting approved with the requisite cost, the salary, we extend the offer to the candidate who in terms might accept the offers and we close the search thereby. Absolutely simple that has been notified in the previous staff as to what can be the initiator, what are the budget approvals. Remember staff approvals, the process flow is a bit much more quicker than the employees approval who are basically the line members. Now let us talk about the vendor recruitment. So we have a create requisitions, we require what needs to be done, the complete information, we just post the position. We are not going into the process any longer. So please understand, differentiate between the line employee required recruitment, staff employee recruitment, and the vendor recruitment thereby. We can have the finalists, selecting the finalists, offer approval, extending e-offers, acceptance of e-offers, and closing the search thereby. Simple, straightforward of process flow vendors thereby. So let me get, give you a demonstration. So what happens with the demonstration is the first thing in an in, in a in a website, in a web portal, you just create the requisition. Now, this is where the initiative creates the requisition. Automatically, it gets populated into the budget approval, whether we have the budget for that or not. If there are any budget shortfalls, we need to work it out. If I once we, when once I say we need to work it out, we need to either ensure that the job or the vacancy is very vital enough. Or we curb the vacancies altogether. If the vacancy is vital enough, we need to arrange for funds, allocate them, and thereby approve the budget. Once this has been done, the employee starts applying for the positions altogether. The positions that the application that has been received are to be reviewed by the candidate pools, and this is where it gets populated into a number of issues. You see the number of candidate it says, uh, what are the experiences. So you can easily compare one candidate vis-a-vis -vis the other. Create offer letters, review the approval processes, acceptances, and so on and so forth, then and there. Onboarding is a simple process that goes with I-9 verification. I-9 verification are the tax verification processes that goes around it. It talks about the employees, staffs, vendor, temporary employees, thereby. It also provides the hiring manager or department the opportunity to create a welcome message, to link to the important departmental information as on when on basis, as on when on kept out there. Process, what are we looking into it? We're looking at the I-9 information, the tax information. I-9 is also your, all your employees things, employ, uh, employment, the resident visa that we are looking into it. If uh, it is um, a non-resident of the country who is applying for the job or been appointed for direct deposit required universities policies, organization policies, emergency contact, onboarding activities then and there. What do we work across with it? The ranking permits. So five roles. There are basically five roles before we wind up. The recruiter roles is in initiating the onboarding processes. ON ONB stands for onboarding processes by reviewing the new hire data. What are we looking into it? We are looking into future state. We are centralizing the HR recruitment, decentralizing the unit recruitment, and decentralizing to the hiring of the managers for, uh, for everyone. So this is onboarding coordinator, customizing the new hires as on when on basis. So Again, in a future state, decentralized and default hiring managers altogether, unless the onboarding coordinator is designated by the hiring managers. New hire is submit a paper, visit the hire web portal, meet the onboarding specialist, 
on the very first day nothing to be decentralized onboarding specialized verify the new hire documents on the very first day of the employment future states is centralizing to the payroll for uh, faulty and stuff for any anything that goes around it appointment specialists is reviewing the payroll information submitting the information the, uh, in the web portal itself updating it onboarding of the new employees recruitment one last review for the recruitment before it starts before they start with the with their work in the organization in the company state 2a and 2b is what we are talking about of preparing an online new hire the onboarding coordinator will be doing it 2b would be submitting the online paperwork direct deposit work authorization sign important policies tax forms account details any anything that relates to the employment information last but not the least would be the onboarding specialist meets with face to face with employees on the very first day to complete the work authorization thereby with this the completion of onboarding process take place so everything has been done on a virtual medium on an online platform and most importantly it's been documented out there which can be accessed at any time anywhere any place by the approved authorities by the authorities other than an employee his or her bosses their their super bosses and so on and so forth but not everybody is able to access everybody's information it depends on the level that has been created in the organization in the online portal but transparency is the keyword out here so everything has been documented and transparent so that there is no room for any confusion with this i come to an end of this presentation thank you for watching this presentation till the very end this gives you a clear picture of onboarding process on an online platform altogether thank you very much